Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to today's uh, webinar on the Computer Science Accelerator Programme. With me, Sarah Zaman is your host and um, Steve as your presenter, whom I'll shortly introduce. Um, I'm the Community Outreach Manager for the North East Yorkshire and Cumbria. I'm responsible for overseeing the um, CAS communities of practice and supporting the CAS community leaders in that area, in those areas. This webinar is part of the CAS Virtual Showcase, which is a two-week window of webinars designed to support the CAS community. During the session, please use the question window on the right-hand side of your screen to ask questions. Um, so don't use the chat, make sure it's the question box. In, when you put a question in there, nobody else will be able to see it. It's just me and I'll get back to you or um, when Steve stops partway through his presentation, he'll answer questions then. All attendees are in listen-only mode. The top of the window has an orange rectangle which can be expanded or collapsed. If you're using social media today, and we really hope you are going to, the hashtag for the event is hashtag CASVirtual20. I'll hand over to Steve now. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming along. So, yeah, in this session, I'm just going to give an overview of what the Computer Science Accelerator is. Um, it has changed a bit recently, so if anybody here ha does have an idea, you, there may be some changes that you're unaware of in terms of who's eligible for it. So I want to give a bit of an overview of uh, what it is, uh, who can do it, and why actually different groups of people may be interested in doing it. Because at first glance, you may think it's only for existing computer science teachers, but actually it's open to many more people, and that I hope to show you why during this session. So, sorry, I'm moving over there. Um, so, in terms, before I start though, in terms of the CS Accelerate program, just make sure you're kind of aware of who the National Centre for Computing and Education are. Um, we are a DfE, largely DfE funded consortium group, and our aim is to provide every child in every school in England um, with a world lead in computing education. Now. You know, we've got a long way to do before we're truly achieving that for all schools. Um, the, the biggest barrier we have is the number of teachers that are confident in delivering computer science at GCSE level. And that's really what the aim of the CS Accelerator programme is, is to train up enough teachers so that schools are able to get enough teachers um, so that they can offer a GCSE. Uh, many of you probably have experienced schools whereby you know, just GCSE computer science is offered one year, but then if that teacher leaves, it may be very vulnerable if there's nobody that can step up. So one of the things we want to do is to build more sustainability in schools and make sure there are enough teachers within all schools that feel confident um, of delivering GCSE computer science. So I said the NCCE is a consortium, and there are three partners in the consortium, Raspberry Pi, um, who do most of the online learning, um, then we've got BCS, who I'll talk about the certificates that we offer in a minute, which is through BCS. And then there's STEM Learning, who I'm actually employed by, and we do a lot of the kind of coordinating um, and management of the programmes. Um, so let's just start by actually thinking about what the CS Accelerator is. Um, it, it is a programme of CPD, effectively. Um, it's aimed at both existing teachers of computing that want to strengthen their subject knowledge and also gain a certificate, but also it's aimed for aspiring teachers, whether that's trainee teachers or whether it's people looking for a second subject. Perhaps you're um, a teacher in a subject where you never have a full timetable of your subject alone, so you end up being a little bit at the mercy of the timetable as to what subjects you might teach each year. And perhaps you want to take control over that a little bit and having um, a second subject in computing would be one way to really achieve that. It's very flexible as well in the way it's designed, so it, it offers a blended model. We've got online and face-to-face. -face. Now, at the moment, obviously, face-to-face -face isn't really happening, or isn't happening at all currently. So we've transferred a lot of our face-to-face -face or adapted them and made them what we call a remote CPD, RCPD. So the remote CPD is different to the online and that the online is kind of pre-recorded content that you work through at set sessions, whereas the RCPD does still have a live facilitator and there will be interaction through um, the online platform. We use Adobe Connect for that. So there'll be kind of questions and answers through the session. There'll be tasks to go away and do and come back, but you'll have that kind of live facilitator support. Um, and as I've already said, it is a DfE funded program as well. So some of the things I'll just kind of warn you, some often want to speak about the CS Accelerator and a lot of our work, people kind of are waiting, well, what's the catch in this? It sounds too good to be true. You want to give us free CBD and hand us bursaries, but what's the catch? Well. There are no catches other than that we need to increase the number of teachers teaching computer science at GCC. 
um, and you know the money's coming largely from the DfE, which is so. So you know, hopefully that's a reassurance to you. Um, in terms of the program benefits, then, so if you're a participant going through the CS Accelerator, there is a certificate available at the end of it once you pass your test, and that is um, awarded by the BCS and um, accredited by the Chartered Institute for. Um, sorry, accredited by the Royal Academy of Engineering. Um, there are a number of generous bursaries, which I'll come to in a moment. Once you graduate the CS Accelerator Programme as well, it doesn't mean the end, and actually quite the opposite. We hope what it will do is inspire you to actually really want to go forward with computing and progress to do more CPD and get more involved in the community, including CAS, and I'll come back to that as well later on. Um, we've also got in development the Teach Computing Secondary Teach Certification, which um, will hopefully be launched later this year. Um, the CS Accelerator is very much about subject knowledge. Um, that's its primary focus. We're trying to give people the subject knowledge to feel confident in teaching um, GCC Computer Science, whereas the Teach Computing Secondary Certificate will be an opportunity to do more in the form of pedagogy and also to recognise anything you do in the community, such as supporting CAS community meetings. So in terms of the bursaries, um, the bursaries have changed a little bit recently to reflect remote CPD. So um, if you are an eligible teacher, which basically means you are um, employed by a school in England, uh, a state school in England, um, or you are training um, to be a teacher, or you're a supply teacher, or you're a teacher that's maybe returning after a break, whether that be um, due to childcare or for any other reason, then you also are eligible to the bursary, but, but it will be on a deferred basis. So by which I mean, once you gain employment, you would then be able to claim this bursary. This is all explained in detail on the website. Um, so the core bursary is of 920 pounds, which will you would receive up six to eight weeks after you pass the test. 300 pounds of that is supposed to be ring fenced for the teachers to spend. So by spend, we mean on things such as resources for the classroom, um, it could go towards a school trip, it could be for use for additional CPD that, you know, the ones that cost money, which ours don't, but um, if you need to use for other CPD and so on. So it's it's flexible how it could be used, but the idea is that it's a, a way of rewarding the teacher as well through going through this, so they get a bit of money to reinvest into their own teaching. Um, when we do return to face to face, there is also an additional £880 potentially available as well, um, in that we pay a £220 day bursary for the first four days of face to face CPD. So, in total, if there's face to face, you could actually be having a bursary of £1,800 once you complete the programme. But as I say, at the moment, with the only offer of remote CPD, because there's not really cover and travel costs incurred in that, those additional £220 per day aren't available. And as I've said, ITT, supply, etc., are eligible for these bursaries, but only once they secure um, a position in an a school in England. So at this point, as well, because there may be some questions around bursaries. Do we have any, Sarah? Um, yeah, we do have a couple of questions. Um, so somebody's asked, they're an international teacher teaching in a British international school. At some point next year, she'll be returning to the UK. Will she be allowed on the course? So in that case, if so, if what what I'd recommend you do is email us at info at teach computing info that is i n f o at teach computing and just explain the situation in a bit more detail. Probably we could do it under the same way as with the deferred, um, a, a bit like the ITT. So if you once you secure a position in this English got a school in England, as long as it's a state school then we would be able to probably defer that bursary. But if you email us on that address, info at Teach Computer, we'll be able to um, confirm that with you. Can, can I just ask as well, just to uh, clarify. So if somebody like um, the person who's just asked that question or somebody, an ITT, you know, a trainee, um, wants to do the courses, but they haven't secured a position in a school, can they still do the courses for free, even though obviously they won't get the bursary? Yeah, so ITT can do the courses for free at the moment. Um, you know, online, one thing I should say is our online courses are free for anybody. The remote CPD is free for teachers or trainee teachers um, that meet our eligibility require, um, requirements in England. Um, there is a cost of, I think it's £240 per course. I think that's the latest figure. Again, that is on the first page of the website. Um, where 
anybody can do our training, but there is also if you're in a independent school, or if you are in an international school without sort of an intention of coming to the UK, in, over to England and teaching, um, then there, you can do it, but there is a charge attached to it. However, where there is an intention to return to England, we may be able to arrange for that third bursary element. In terms of securing a position already, if you're an ITT teacher, um, no, whilst you're training, you are able to um, train for free, but it's just that you won't be able to claim the bursary until you're in employment. Okay, thank you. That's clear. Yeah, no more questions at the moment. Okay, thank you. So, um, I've touched upon this a little bit already, but in terms of who is eligible for the CSA, so at the beginning of the programme, really, we were very much targeting uh, um, teachers that were probably ICT teachers, come computing teachers, um, or other people that already teach computing that needed that extra level of support. However, um, early on this year, we were given approval by the DfE to widen our eligibility criteria, which means that we can now proactively target all teachers, so of any subject, which does mean that second subject teachers um, are very welcome. It also includes college instructors. So um, if a college has intentions of offering GCSE computer science, then they will be entitled to do this as well. Um, trainee teachers from any subject, obviously computing, but also any subjects where they recognise a second subject. Um, in my previous school, for instance, we had over 100 people, a PE teachers apply for one position. So if you're able to offer computing as well, alongside a kind of a very popular subject like PE, that might be the difference between you getting an interview or not. Um, supply teachers, so um, if you are currently a supply teacher, whether or not, um, again, whether that's computing or not, but you would like to be able to offer computer science as a subject that you deliver, then again, you'd be very welcome. And then, as I said, the returning teachers as well. So those that have had a career break and are looking to come back in, um, you'd be able to do the CSA for free. And then in all of these cases, claim the bursary once you've uh, secured employment. Obviously, if you're an existing teacher, the school you're currently working at will be able to um, claim the bursary as soon as you come, well, within six to eight weeks of you passing the test, they would receive that bursary. Can can I ask? We've just had another question. Sure. I can can primary school teachers do it? Yep. Okay. So good point. I've got to put them on there. Actually, yes, primary school teachers can do it under um, pretty much the same conditions as an ITT. So you can do it for free. You won't get charged for it. However, you would only receive the bursary if you were to move to a secondary school or school that offered GCSE computer science. So it would act as the deferred bursary. However, um, when face-to-face -face resumes, the, di the slight difference between ITT and primary is that we would allow primary school teachers to claim the £220 per day up to £880 aspect of the bursary to, to cover their costs of being out of the classroom. So currently, whilst we've only got remote CPD, there would be no bursary for primary teachers, but all training would be free. When we return to face-to-face, -face, you would be eligible to claim for the bursary element attached specifically to that face-to-face -face element, but not the other £920 that I spoke about earlier. And is there a maximum amount that the primary school teachers could claim for that? So the maximum would be £880 if they were to do four days of face-to-face -face CPD. Right. That's, that's great. Uh, one more question. Um, can, somebody's asked, can they do as many remote online courses as they want to for free? Absolutely. Yep. So again, this is this is something we've, we we kind of had a 40 hour really. We we're trying to get everybody through the program in 40 hours. And but we've now got a, a relaxed um, level that you only need to do a minimum of 10 hours in order for the test to open up. I'll explain this in a minute of CPD, but with no upward limit. So um, basically, because we've got such a wide range of people now coming onto the program from those that actually are really experienced teachers that just want to be recognised with this certificate that everybody else is able to access and it wasn't fair that they couldn't at the time without having to do 40 hours CPD. So now there's this nice compromise that you just have to do 10 hours of CPD and then you can go to the test and, and hopefully pass it straight away. Whereas those that are coming in as a second subject with maybe no previous experience at all can you know do as many hours as they need before they feel ready to take the test. Yeah, great, thank you. Okay. I'll move on to the next slide. Um, so in just to kind of summarise the benefits to each group, obviously existing teachers, it's a chance to have a kind of increasingly nationalised, nationally recognised certificate. And as I said, now you only have to do 10 hours CPD. And I, when I show you some of the courses at the moment, you 
that 10 hours won't feel like wasted time as well. So even if you are, you know, really um, have strong subject knowledge already, there's enough flexibility on, uh, sorry, enough variety in the courses that we offer, particularly some of our online courses, um, that actually there is some quite advanced offer there as well. So I'm sure you'll find some of that's of interest to you. Um, I think it's really important to point out just how much of a shortage subject computing is. And um, in the last couple of years, I think, recruitment targets to ITT training has only been sort of 70 percent so they've missed um, recruitment targets and you know that was done from a fairly low starting point of people that felt that they were able to teach computing so so it continues to be a shortage subject and as a teacher that always is a benefit to you like I said given the example of the PE teacher it's something if you're applying for jobs that looks good it may help you to negotiate um, better starting salaries as well and you may also find that actually it's a bit easier to work your way to the top, you know, as a, as a subject lead in computing than it is, say, one of the more um, widely populated teaching subjects because there's obviously less competition. So you, there, there's a number of reasons why it might be beneficial from a kind of career perspective. Um, and the same sort of thing applies to trainees and suppliers. Well, it just might help you stand out that bit more when you're offering, if you can offer computer science as a second subject. But I think, you know, I really would. And I'm somebody to give a bit of background myself. I started off as a business studies teacher many years ago um, and joined a school which only taught GCSE. So I found myself at the time teaching ICT very early on, which was sometimes fairly comfortable doing, but I had to learn a lot there. And then over the years, kind of, it was a bit of a hobby coding when I was younger, but not to any kind of serious level. And it's something that I've trained myself to do ready for the, the when the curriculum was introduced in 2014. So I've kind of been on that journey myself. And, one thing I will say, yes, it's quite challenging at times, but it is actually a really enjoyable subject to teach. And the lovely thing about computer science is how relevant it is. And you can't help but pick up the newspaper and find multiple stories that kind of really help you bring the subject to life. So it is a lot of fun to teach. Um, just to kind of, I won't dwell on these, but on our the Teach Computing website, we have got some case studies just to show the kind of different backgrounds that people have um, that have gone on and com now completed the computer science accelerator program so uh, Lee at the top there is kind of one of the ones that actually had good subject knowledge already um, but has gone through the program and just supplemented that subject knowledge and he's you know he's, he's benefited in other ways from the program and um, we've had Julie who was the English teacher um, that has gone through it we've got similarly we've had um, Helen who was a music teacher and the most recent one that's gone up there is um, Fiona, who's a returning teacher. So it's worth, if you are in sort of a situation, just reading about some of these experiences people have had, because I appreciate, particularly if it is a second subject, that it may feel a bit intimidating, the idea of starting from scratch or near scratch um, with a new subject. So it'll be good to have a read of some of those. So to help you when you first go to the CS Accelerator page on the Teach Computing website, one of the things we've now very recently uploaded um, are some pathways and these aren't pathways you have to follow they just help make it uh, with some suggestions of which courses you might want to prioritize doing based on your starting point now if you've already just a bit of a warning here and there's something we need to get fixed but at the moment if you're already have already enrolled on the CS accelerator program when you go to that page you won't at the moment see these pathways these only appear to people that are new and haven't yet enrolled and um, the simple way to fix that is if you just go to the top right and log out, you'll then be seen as somebody that's, that, that is new to the program. And these basically they're just PDFs that have been uploaded for the moment. They will then appear for you and you'll be able to access these and look at them. So what I say kind of starting point is just you probably have a fairly good idea of where you are, whether you're a complete beginner or whether you think actually something is quite advanced. So um, just to give you a couple of examples of what these look like. So this one is the advanced one um, so if you are somebody that's already got quite strong subject knowledge here are four courses that we've kind of picked out as being maybe more interest of more interest to you because they go slightly deeper into more maybe slightly um, more advanced areas of the subject and, and look at things in a slightly different way so they're really interesting whereas if I go back um, you'll see that the beginner pathways are much more kind of introduction so if we look at number three there um, programming 101 and introduction to python for educators that is a really basic introduction to programming gives you everything you need to know to get started with python it's a really good course actually it's what i've done myself um, so there is a real range for from the complete beginners through to those who actually have really good subject knowledge now this you know truly is something for everybody and then there's all the ones in between so i say these these aren't pathways that you have to follow they're just kind of recommended routes through the program um, 
So when you do first go to the CS page and say, if you haven't yet enrolled, you'll be faced with the screen that's in front of you now. And you'll see at the bottom there in the tab where it says learning pathways for teachers, that's where those PDFs are stored. Um, but on the right hand side, if you click enroll now, it will ask you to create an account. Um, just give you a little bit of a warning on this, because this is where we do get some confusion, is um, we have the this Teach Computing website is kind of built on the front of the STEM website. So it will take you to STEM in order to create your account. Don't be thrown by that. Just just pay careful attention to the little pop up kind of or the messaging around it, which will talk you through it. Likewise, the online courses um, are all hosted on FutureLearn platform. You can access those courses from FutureLearn directly, but if you do that, that's not automatically going to add it to your um, learning journey here, which means that we won't know that you've done that CFD. So it's really important that one, you make sure you use the same email address for FutureLearn as you use when you sign up for um, Teach Computing, but also that you access the FutureLearn courses through this our website because it gives you a different level of access so always come to the teach computing website first make sure you're logged in and then go and search for the courses via there and as long as you're doing that you shouldn't have any problems again if you do get into difficulties and you, you think or you've already done and you think you've already signed up in different ways just let us know at the info at teach computing um, email address and we can look into that and usually get that resolved for you um, the other tool we've got to help you kind of work out your starting point now I think for a complete beginner, this is probably not something you need to worry too much about because it's probably going to be just a bit demoralising. It's a multiple choice quiz and it will probably tell you, you know, very little about computer science. But if you know that already, then you may just want to go straight to that kind of starting point. It's, it's, it's something you may want to do because it's, it's also follows a very pretty much the same format as um, the actual end test that you'll do. It is multiple choice, um, which may sound easy, but it's not as easy as you think because they have actually been very carefully constructed, these questions. So you do need to want, you do need to know your stuff before taking the test. But at the same time, it, it's a kind of more reassuring way of doing it than thinking you're going to be sitting down with some written test. At the end, when it comes to taking your real test as well, you do get the chance to retake as many times as you need to. Um, there, there is a bit of a break in between. Your first, if, you, if you fail the, te the test twice, you then have to have a 48 hour break. And the idea is that you go and do a bit more CPD or go and do a bit more revision before attempting it again. And I think the pass rate is 65%. I think you need to get out um, to pass. Um, so, when you when you've logged it when you've enrolled in the program and you start working through as well you will get this um, kind of checklist appear that helps you see where you, what progress you're making through the, the journey so you'll see at the top your first thing is take that diagnostic quiz that I've just shown you um, once you've done that it will tick that off then you have to do an online or face to face course now the as I said you need to do ten hours of CPD before the test will open to you. Um, but one of those must be remote CPD or face-to-face. -face. You can do two remote CPDs if you want to, and that'll open up the test, but what you can't do is only two online um, tests, for instance, to make it 10 hours. You do have to have engaged in at least one face-to-face um, -face or remote CPD, plus you can make up the rest of the time, however. Like I say, you are allowed to do as much as you want. You don't have to stop at 10 hours. You know, We encourage you to do more than that, but that is the minimum way through it. Um, and then when, once you've done that 10 hours, you will then have the test that will pop up as available to you. Like I say, you can retake that as many times as you need to. Um, I'm not going to dwell on this, but just to give you an idea of the kind of different remote CPD we've got, just the point I will make is that our remote CPD has been adapted from our face-to-face -face CPD and is not, is not just a, a direct copy of what was done face to face likewise we haven't done all of our face to face cpd so there is there is a wider offer of our face to face as well but at the moment like I say that's not available these are the remote options so again there are lots of introduction courses courses that i are aimed at complete beginners as well as those that are aimed at more advanced computing teachers likewise with the csa online cpd there's a really quite varied range of courses out there i'm not sure this i think actually there's even a couple more that have been added since um, I last updated this list, but say for instance, program, you see there's three different courses for programmer, which will really take you from a beginner to a fairly um, advanced and very competent user of Python. Um, the other thing to highlight this case, we do have any people on, on the call from ITT. 
we are working with a few of our providers at the universities to actually put on specific courses for ITT trainers, which you'll find on our website when you book. We're not forcing you to go on these courses, but the, the idea of it is, is that it, you may find it's pitched at a level that is more appropriate to you and you'll go through as a group um, with other ITT people. So you can book onto any of our courses, but if you are a trainee teacher, we would recommend that you do, for the moment, go for the ITT, certainly while you get started, but it's not, in, not insist upon. Um, another really important level of support is the other CS champions. Now, the, the computer champions are there to kind of mentor people through the program and also to be the kind of nudge that they, they both support you and nudge you to keep you going because you know teaching is a really busy profession and sometimes we need to kind of feel like there is somebody kind of just on at us a little bit say have you booked on your next course and so on so so cs champions will make contact with you when you enroll in the program and start training and they will offer to support you how you need so if you are um somebody that is very new to the subject and needs that level support cs champions will offer you um, one to one support if you need it. The other thing we've recently started setting up and trying in is smaller kind of groups of teachers on the CS Accelerator going through together. Um, so it's not maybe, maybe some people don't like the idea of working one to one, for instance, with CS Champ would rather go through in a kind of small group of 10 to 15 um, teachers working with a CS Champion or two at the same time. And those sessions can take everything from you know getting started choosing your courses through to you've been on one of the courses there were a few things you didn't understand can we go over that and through to helping you actually prepare and revise for the exam so they're really flexible they're there to support you they're a great source of help and they will hopefully you know help you really early on particularly where maybe you are struggling a bit more if you are a new teacher um they'll be really important to help you through to that next stage so the other thing that I did, I did briefly mention at the beginning, I think, is that at the moment, um, when you complete your CS Accelerator programme, all CPD becomes free to you that the NCC offers. You can start doing that now, even if you are close, if you take your test. But from hopefully late autumn, we will actually have the next stage, which is this secondary certificate in computing, of which your subject knowledge certificate that you get through doing the CSA feeds into. So you'll have your certificate for doing the CS Accelerator. But then in order to get the secondary computing teacher, you have to have already done the CS Accelerator as well to be eligible for this next bit. And this is the one that encourages you to do more around pedagogy, encourages you to attend and take part in CAS community meetings, for instance, and various other kind of things such as running a code club or um, a, a CAS barefoot session, all these different brilliant computing uh, resources and communities that are out there. It's just a way of showing your involvement and celebrating your involvement in those. And the thing that I'll kind of just finish off before taking any other questions is the bit about well, what if your school doesn't offer GCSE computer science at the moment at all your colleges where again this is you know open to FE as well so um, we have our, so I've spoken about uh, CS champions in a kind of similar way where CS champions work with individuals we also have subject matter experts and the subject matter experts are employed to work with at a school level more so whilst they will be working with individuals in a school um, they're kind of, they're there as um, kind of subject matters, but also kind of curriculum consultants. They're there to help you um, establish an action plan for what you need to do to get ready to teach computing. They're also there to help schools that maybe are delivering computer science, but are maybe struggling a bit. Maybe they're at risk because of the scenario I described earlier on, that's a really common one. You're currently doing computer science and maybe you're doing it really well, but it all hinges on one person. And maybe that person's got a promotion in September and are going leaving the school. You know that puts the subject at risk so um basically there the, again this is all on the teach computing website if you go to the bursary page there's a link to the subject matter experts but you'll be able to um access um you'll be able to access the 1400 pound bursary simply for completing the action plan so agreeing to a number of actions and then once you actually commit to introducing gcse computer science if you are a school or college that's not currently doing it there is also an additional 4,000 bursary. So this is on top of the people that get the bursaries you're receiving for doing the CS Accelerator. So, um, you know, if you if you committed to putting three or four people onto the CS Accelerator in your school to make sure you have that sustainability to offer computer science and you work for an SME and then you committed to introduce computer science, you can quite easily um, kind of get close to £10,000 in bursaries just for having CPD. And that would be really useful for obviously helping you establish the subject in the school. Um, so really that, that's everything I wanted to say. So it's just a case now if there are any other questions to pick up. 
Uh, yeah, thanks for that, Steve. Uh, we have got a couple. Um, hold on one second while I find them. If you've already done some of the courses on Future Learn and then register for the accelerator, does the course you've already done count? So say, can you say that again? So if you've yeah, so if you've already done some of the um, online courses, you know the Future Learn courses, um, yeah. and then you enrol for the CS accelerator um, program after that. Do the online courses count, or can they can they count? So they they definitely can count as long as they were CS accelerated courses. So some of our not all of the online courses on Future Learn do count towards CS accelerated. Some of them are more key stage three, for instance, or primary. But yeah, as long as it was CS accelerated one, as long as you then enrol with the same email address that you use to sign up for Future Learn, it should appear sort of within 24 hours on your dashboard the, the it, when the update happens it should pull that across if at that point is so if you've left if you've left it a couple of days and nothing's happened email at info at teach computing again and they will look into that for you and be able to advise you on what your next step is but yeah in theory as long as you've used the same email address for both it should pull that across yeah, so if you just tell us what's that email again, just in case. So um, people... info at teachcomputing.org. That's brilliant. Thanks for that, because I think some people might have um, enrolled for some of those online courses without doing going through the CS Accelerator um, program first. So, no, thanks for that. Um, and also, we've had another question. Are the remote courses full day courses? So the way they run at the moment um, is they aren't they aren't full day course. They're scheduled normally over kind of two or three week period, um, and with a session or two within the week. So it depends. It's slightly different different courses, but most of them are around an hour to an hour and a half um, for the actual delivery aspect at any one time, followed by a participant task, so a task that you go off independently, and then are reviewed by your facilitator, um, and they are made up of three to four sessions. So um usually it's three to four different days um with an hour to an hour and a half on each in terms of actual participant uh, sorry in terms of facilitate led with participant tasks in the middle post september we will probably find that we have a a kind of a slightly different model recognizing the change in situation of teachers so that may change a little bit in that we may find the teachers would then prefer actually most of it to be in one in one day in which case that's something we're looking at at the moment just to work out what's best but at the moment um no they are they are uh, scheduled across several days if you go on to the teach computing website and look at courses um find the course you want it will then show you when the different sessions are for that so you'll be able to see okay um and last question is um if with you've talked about some of the changes um, that might be happening in light of sort of the current situation. Uh, where would I? Where would someone's just asked? Where would they go to find out the latest information? Would it be the Teach Computing website? Um, whereabouts would that be? Just on the yeah. Homepage? So on yeah. So on the Teach Computing website, um, if you there is, we do have down the bottom. It's a little bit hidden away actually, but if you scroll to the bottom, you, we do have a kind of little tab all about the news. So all the updates. All the important information comes through and there's usually a blog article that explains it in quite a lot of detail that's brilliant and i think that might be it for the um question steve okay so um so thank you everybody for joining us today thank you steve um for presenting um my personal highlights were um the, the four people the four teachers who weren't computing teachers um, and decided, you know, um, taking part in some of the programmes from the NCCE, decided to uh, change where they were going with their careers. I thought that was really interesting, so I'll be keeping an eye on that page. Um, and for everybody else, if you do have any um, things that you want to share with other people on social media, you know, your highlights, that would be great, um, on the CAS website as well, in the forums, and also on our CAS Facebook groups. We've, we have a primary and a secondary group. We'd love to continue discussions on there. At the end of this webinar, a short survey will appear on the screen. We'd be grateful if you could take a minute to complete the survey. Additionally, in about a week's time, you'll receive an email with a CPD certificate confirming your attendance at this session. A recording of this webinar will be available on the CAS website in about a week's time. And we do hope to see you at other sessions in the showcase. Please do continue to spread the word about the first ever CAS virtual showcase. And thanks everybody, and thanks Steve again for being for your brilliant presentation and we hope to see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you.